What's up? I'm Troubleshoot. Welcome back to another video. In this quick guide, I'll be showing you how to optimize Ghost Runner 2 for the best possible performance on PC while still keeping it looking absolutely great. Without further ado, let's begin. This video is not going to cover Windows optimization at all. Instead, in the description down below, you'll find a Windows 10, 11, and NVIDIA optimization guides to get the most out of your PC. Let's hop straight into the game itself and customize from there. When you're firing up the game, you'll get two options, DirectX 11 or 12. Which one gives you better performance? Well, to put it simply, when ray tracing support is added, hopefully soon, it'll only be available in DirectX 12 mode. For now, there's no ray tracing as far as I understand, and usually you'll get a better performance on DirectX 11 until further optimizations are made, though it's definitely a very mixed bag. It could be better on one for you versus the other, so what I'd recommend is starting out with DirectX 11, customizing all of your options in-game, and then firing into DirectX 12 to compare on your system. So for now, I'll start in DirectX 11 mode and play. All right, then we go. When you reach the main menu, simply head into settings and we'll start on the video tab at the very top. There's a short list of settings in here, so customizing it should be relatively simple. First of all, starting off with our Windows settings. For this, you should definitely choose full screen here for the best, most stable performance and make sure that your resolution matches your display. As in, if you have a 2K display, select 2K, 1080, 1080, 4K, 4K, etc. You should always do this as you won't be rendering too many pixels that you won't see and of course things won't be needlessly blurry as you're pushing out the right number of pixels. If you need further performance, we can adjust the resolution scale here lower in order to lower the rendered resolution while still keeping our game looking relatively good. But better than lowering your resolution scale is using AMD FSR2, DLSS or XESS if this is available to you. XESS only works in DirectX 12 mode and obviously the same goes for ray tracing when that's added too. For now, it's a choice between FSR2 and DLSS. If you're running a DirectX 12 and can use Intel XESS, this option is available to you as well. Essentially, these options here allow the game to render at a lower resolution and use AI magic in order to upscale it and get it back to where it should be. For instance, quality renders the game at 66% and uses AI magic to bring it all the way up to 100%, keeping us with a huge performance gain while the game still looks almost just as good. The further to the performance side we push this, the lower the render resolution is, the harder AI has to work, and the more weird graphic artifacts will start to notice. I'd recommend you start on the quality section and move your way upwards towards performance the more that you need after finishing this optimization guide. Balanced is probably as far as I would go on medium end systems unless you really need extra performance. The same goes for FSR2 and XESS quality settings. Now, if we use DLSS, there's another option here called frame generation. This is only available to you on RDX 40 series graphics cards and essentially adds extra frames in between real frames interpolating and making things look a bit smoother. But keep in mind, this won't actually make the game feel any smoother as our input is still only being rendered on certain set frames. It's just that there's a smooth transition between them. It makes it look smoother without improving the feel. Something that should improve the feel is NVIDIA Reflex Low Latency. This only works with frame generation turned off. If we turn this on, you should notice a decrease in input latency. If you're CPU bound instead of GPU bound, select on plus boost for even more performance and smoothness. For me, I have a powerful CPU and GPU, so I'll just be leaving this on on. Then scrolling down, we'll start with some of the actual graphic settings. First of all, anti-aliasing. This option will be turned off if you're using any kind of upscaling as it's automatically done for you in the upscaler, smoothing out jagged edges. If you choose to play at native resolution, anti-aliasing will be something that you probably need. Keep this towards the lower end as it's not hugely important, especially because this is a super fast-paced game. Starting off with post-processing. There's almost no difference between these options here, both visually and in FPS, so you can comfortably leave this on high for the most part. Then shadow quality. For each step you move up on this list to ward off, the more FPS you'll be gaining. So, starting on Epic, moving to High, you'll notice a huge boost in performance of around 30-ish percent. I'd highly recommend High being the highest option you choose for shadow quality. Moving to Medium, you'll notice a 10-15% to 15 improvement, and to Off once again, though Off will definitely look a little bit weird, as shadows are important. High is the highest I would go, Medium is as low as I would go, unless you really need extra performance, in which case you can choose Off, then Texture Quality. This option completely depends 
depends on the amount of VRAM in your setup and for the most part can be set depending on your graphics card. If you're playing in 4K with a powerful graphics card, choose Epic. Otherwise, if you're playing on anything other than 4K, choose based on your graphics card. For high, you'll need around 6 gigs or more VRAM. If you have 4 or more gigs of VRAM, choose medium and anything below that, choose low. Essentially, if you choose an option that's too low, you'll notice a quality decrease for no extra performance. But if you choose an option that's too high, you'll absolutely tank your FPS as it'll be constantly swapping textures in and out of your graphics card's memory. Then, effects quality. For each of these options here, you'll notice about a 5% difference. On low and medium, there's no screen space reflections, meaning that objects are no longer shiny and reflecting the environment around them. Screen space reflections are relatively cheap and definitely cheap compared to ray traced reflections and make the game feel a whole lot more alive. I'd recommend choosing high as the lowest option here unless you really need more performance as it just has a huge impact on how the game looks and of course feels. But if you need lower, you can of course expect around about a 5% difference for each step you go down. Brightness is your preference and the same goes for HDR brightness if you're using an HDR monitor with it enabled. Then blow. Blow is motion blur and very important in a game that should feel fast. It can also hide frame stutters and things like that, but it may be detrimental to your vision, especially while spinning around quickly, in which case you may want to turn this off. If you're someone who struggles from motion sickness, this is definitely an option you'll want to turn off as it should greatly improve your gameplay experience. Personally, I'll be leaving this on medium, and if things are a little bit too blurry for my liking in gameplay, I'll be turning this off completely. Gore effect is your preference and should mostly have no impact on your FPS, except for when there is core present. Frame rate limit should be set to unlimited unless you're streaming or recording and your OBS or whatever software you're using is really struggling, in which case cap your FPS to slightly lower than what you're getting. If you're getting over 60, cap it to 60. If you're getting over 120, cap it to 120, etc. That'll leave some of your graphics card available for your system to use in other programs. Then vSync, you should definitely turn this off unless you're getting screen tearing where the top and bottom half of your monitor don't match up. Field of view is finally also your preference as well. Even though it will technically affect your FPS, it'll more affect your gameplay experience, so make it something that you're comfortable with rather than what gets you the best performance. And that's it. We can apply the settings here and hop into game. Besides that, there's not really much else we need to adjust. If you're someone who struggles from motion sickness, once again, on the gameplay tab, you'll find camera shake. Just make sure to turn this to off as well, as that should also improve your experience. You can set it to low if you find it a little bit too jarring or over the top, but for the most part, everything is fine the way that it is. So that's it. From here, it's up to you to enjoy the game. Just a quick note, if you'd like an FPS overlay, there's a few ways that we can do this. First of all, this green overlay in the top left is from the Steam overlay. If you have the game on Steam, hit Shift Tab, then head into Settings, followed by In-Game, and look for In-Game FPS Counter. Set this to anything but off, then enable High Contrast Color right below this. That'll make it green and very easy to spot. If you'd like more details, you can use third-party software such as MSI Afterburner and Rivertune Statistics Server. That'll get you a whole bunch of information telling you about your performance while you're playing the game. To keep things mostly spoiler-free, I'll be sticking to the intro here because of course it's important as it's a story game. For now, we'll stand somewhere here. As you can see, screen space reflections make up a huge part of the image. If we pause the game, settings, video, and lower effects quality to medium for example, you'll see the scene has changed dramatically for the negative, and ultimately, we haven't really moved from 170 FPS. So for the most part, these settings are really good and should be super closely comparable to the ultra settings, at least until RTX and ray tracing comes around in the near future. So with our optimized settings, we're sitting at a solid 170 FPS. We'll pause the game, settings, video, disable upscaling, apply, and at native 2K resolution with a 3080 Ti, I'm sitting at around 160-ish FPS. Not a huge drop, but it's still a little bit. As for quality, there's not much difference. If we go ahead and crank everything up to as high as it can go, you'll see we've now dropped to about 130, 140. This game is super well optimized, at least for NVIDIA graphics cards, and you should have a generally good experience while playing it. Lowering, 
options is obviously something you'll want to do for better performance until you're comfortable. If you're playing on a 2K or 4K display, try dropping down to 1080p if you're really struggling. If you're playing at 1080p and still really struggling with lower end hardware, try dropping your resolution to 1600 by 900. It should still look relatively sharp while giving you a large performance increase. For the most part, DLSS and FSR2 will be great places to gain extra performance. If we enable FSR, you can see we jump to around 170, almost FPS, 160. 60s, 170, and DLSS quality should give us pretty much the same performance. These are really great contenders, and it's really about which side you like better, or of course, which side you see more details with. In the distance, you can see fans on the wall with some lighting above it and a flashing yellow light below it. You'll see this better than I do because it was an instant change. Not much has changed over there. It's just that the lighting looks a little bit more weird with FSR, as you can see the flashing yellow light, than DLSS, personally. It just looks a little bit smoother with DLSS. Moving down to balanced, you'll see a slight performance increase yet again and a slight visual decrease in quality. Then to performance, the same goes again. And finally, ultra performance. This game really does look pretty good with ultra performance DLSS settings where we're rendering at a third of our resolution. But keep in mind, I'm playing at 2K, so that's probably, I don't know, I think probably 720p-ish, which is still really good. If you're playing on a 1080p display, things will look a little bit weird with the ultra performance option selected. This may be too much for you on much higher resolution displays. But anyways, for the most part, you've now seen how to optimize this game for the best possible performance while keeping everything looking as good as possible as well. It's super optimized, at least for high-end hardware or NVIDIA GPUs for the most part, but of course, things will only continue to improve in the future. Anyways, that's about it for this quick guide. So thank you for watching. My name's been Troubleshoot, and I'll see you all next time. Ciao.